goes on in verse 76 and says, And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of your, their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the path of peace. Father, thank you so very much. The path of peace, that's what we long for. And Father, that's what uh, has been prophesied that your son, Jesus, would come and fulfill by coming to the earth. He didn't come and fulfill that right away, but uh, that was something, Father, that he lived and that he worked at and that he conquered Satan. And as a result, Father, we can have a way to the uh, life of peace. Thank you so very much. Be with us in this study. Help us to understand what you have for us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we see here that in this scripture, I'm going to start and kind of dissect it, if you will, by starting back at verse 68 of the uh, first chapter. Here we see that Zechariah is talking. He's a prophet. <coughs> A prophet of God. Starting in verse 67, just to get the, the, the context. His father, Zechariah, that is the father of John the Baptist, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he, who? He, God, has come to his people and redeemed them. So this is a prophecy that Zechariah is doing. You know, it's, it's amazing what prophets could do back then. They were people selected by God for a special duty. And God allowed them to see and foretell what was coming in the future. So this is uh, Zechariah's prophecy. Praise be to the God, the God... Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he, that is God, has come to his people and redeemed them. Um, Zechariah is saying that uh, God will redeem them, his people, to, he will save them, he will rescue them. Verse 69, he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. He has raised a horn. He has raised up a horn of salvation, an instrument, a voice, a megaphone. He has raised up a megaphone of salvation for us in the house of David. Now, we know who that is. If it was in the house of David, it was Jesus that Zechariah is prophesying that would be raised, raised up. Uh, I like the way the Living Bible presents this, this scenario right here. I'm going to read to you from the Living Bible. It says, Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to visit his people and redeem them. He is sending us a mighty Savior from the royal line of his servant David. Just as he promised through his holy prophets long ago, someone to save us from our enemies, from all who hate us. He has been merciful to our ancestors, yes, to Abraham himself, by remembering his sacred promise to Abraham and by granting us the privileges of serving God fearlessly, free from our enemies and by making us holy and acceptable, ready to stand in his presence forever. <clears throat> so my NIV again reads this way. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophet long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, 
to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. The oath he swore unto his father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And then Zechariah focuses his attention in verse 76 to his son John the Baptist. He says in verse 76 down to 79, you, my child, that is, Zechariah is talking, about, talking to his son John the Baptist, you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High. For you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him to give his people the knowledge of salvation among the uh, through the forgiveness of sin. And that's what John the Baptist did. You know the story of John the Baptist. He went out in the wilderness and, and talked to the people and said, Repent, for the Lord is at hand. He was preparing the way for Jesus. Because the tender mercies of our God, by which the rising sun, that is Jesus, who could, who came from heaven as the morning star, will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the path of peace. To guide our feet into the path of peace. I have a, a video I want to share with you. Ask Seuss if he would get it together for us. <coughs> Just listen to the words of this particular song. You know the song, and you know the man who wrote the song. Would you play that, Seuss? I'm tired and so weary. But I must go along Till the Lord comes and calls me away Oh yes, where the morning's so bright And the Lamb is the light And the night, night is a square the
Satan, the earth was, Genesis 1 verse 2, without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. There was total chaos. Did you realize, brother, that Satan had rebelled against God, wanting to take the place of God. Satan disrupted God's relationship with Adam and Eve, introducing sin to the first man and first woman. Satan caused havoc between Cain and Abel. Satan drove Nimrod and the nations at that time against God. The earth became so wicked that God destroyed his creation with a flood during the day of Noah. Where was the peace? There was no sense there was no peace in Israel, the nation God chose to work through. Egypt constantly subjugated Israel and made slaves of them. In giving Israel his laws, the Israelites constantly grumbled and rebelled. They had no peace. They had no harmony. And there had been wars on earth from the time of King David through these present years, this very present time. Tell me of a time in recent history where there was not some kind of war going on. Peace on earth does not exist. No peace among families, no peace among neighbors, no peace among countries, no peace among churches, and no peace among ourselves as individuals. Trauma, traumatic lives. But today, God would that uh, we Experience peace. Turn, if you would, to Romans 12. <clears throat> Romans 12, verses 17 through 21. It says, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends upon you, Live at peace with everyone. 
Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, I, it is uh, mine to advance. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap a burning coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So God wants us to live in a state of peace. He wants us to have a peaceful existence. Go to Romans chapter 14. Verse 19, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Do not destroy uh, the work of God for the sake of food. Let's get this. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it is wrong for a person to eat something that causes someone else to stumble. <coughs> It is better not to eat meat or drink, wine, or to do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. Be at peace. You know, make life easy for them. Don't make them feel guilty or out of place. You might be right, but you don't have to do it. Live in peace in a way that leads to peacefulness. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, verse, verse 14. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So holy, being holy is a quality and a character that, that uh, is of peace. Or I should say peace is a quality of being holy and living a holy life. One more scripture right here. And then this one everybody knows. Galatians 5. We know what the fruit of the Spirit is. Right? Yeah. We know the fruit of the Spirit. <coughs> verse, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Peacefulness must emanate out of the life of every believer. But as I mentioned earlier, peace throughout this world has not existed since the fall of Satan from the very beginning. But Jesus will usher in a world of peace and it will last forever. This world of peace and harmony will last forever. I'm going to get you back to our text. Luke 1. Luke 1, starting in verse 76 again. And you, my child, will be called the, a prophet of the Most High. That is John the Baptist. For you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of sin because of the tender mercies of our God by which the rising sun, that is Jesus Christ, will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into a way or a path of peace. <clears throat> what does it say in Isaiah 9? I didn't mean to say that was the last scripture before that I was going to read it. <laughs> but uh, Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, 
unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. So he will be in charge, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. And forever. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He will usher in a world of peace and it will last forever. So, what does a world of peace look like? Well, in addition to peace, there's harmony, there's unity, there's agreement, there's love, there's trust and tranquility, there's stability, and there's safety. That's peace. What is the opposite of peace? And, and doesn't this smell of Satan? This opposite of peace? War, hatred, conflict, turmoil, upheaval, unrest, contention, discord, fight, oppression, strife. That's Satan. All that's going to be done away with. That's going to be gone. This is a short one today. Maybe you say hallelujah for that. <laughs> yes, the Prince of Peace had to be born as a baby. He came into this world, lived the life he lived. He conquered Satan and died for us so that he could usher in a world of peace. Thanks to the birth of our Savior that we have that future to look forward to. There's a bumper sticker that says, No Jesus, K-N-O-W Jesus, no peace, K-N-O-W, peace. It also says, no Jesus, N-O Jesus, no peace, N-O peace. Hallelujah Amen. for the Prince of Peace. Amen. Father, thank you so very much that we can come before you as your people and know, Father, what the birth of our Savior really means to us. And Father, he was born a long time ago. And your plan of salvation, your, the plan that you have for all of us has come about, Father, as soon he will be returning to this world. And Father, we will be ushered back into that relationship or into that relationship that was at the very beginning where you, the Son, and the Holy Spirit existed together in peace and harmony. Thank you so very much, and we look forward to that. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you.